Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. We're here in freezing New York City. Uh, we're gonna keep going on the Power BI. Uh, just stepped outside a little bit to get some of the greenery and the cow into this shot. Uh, so we're not in front of the whiteboard. We don't need to because we're just gonna do some cool stuff in Power BI, connecting tables. There's a lot of stuff to do, but you know, it's too cold to be out here. So let's get upstairs and into the office and continue. All right, let's keep going. So we have the item list. We fixed the item category code. We have quantity on hand looking really good. Um, let's get into Power BI right here and uh, take a look at our table. So why did I want to fix the item category code to have everything populated? Well, the reason is we might want to do reporting on the item category. So if I go into uh, like pie chart, like here, Right now it's putting a pie chart of the uh, quantities available uh, or the inventory based on each one of the items. And it's just really hard to read this. Obviously we have a lot of paper coffee cups, uh, but we would rather see it by item. So if I go into values over here and let me just go ahead and take that out and i want to have take out the number and so the values i'd like to put in the inventory and values and in details i'm going to put the item category like so so now i can see i have by cups we have a lot of cups or cup related things this would be coffee and cups uh, we have miscellaneous being a lot less, table, and here. So here we have a chart for inventory by item category. Now, not very useful because uh, why would I want to compare how many tiers I have, you know, compared to how many cups I have? But at least it gives you a visualization. And I can go back into my table just like that. So this is the data that it's taken. It's just looking at item category and inventory. Now, what if we want to see something more? Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what else we have available. Um, so these are the fields that I can pick out of. And this is in the items data uh, stream. And this is basically the item list. And we can see here that we do have uh, not many uh, values or, or basically totals. So I would, it would be interesting for me to see uh, like sales. So how can we get the item sales and item purchases for a timeline? So let's play around with this a little bit. So this is obviously maybe not the correct data stream for that. So we're gonna get some more data. So we're gonna go and get data, hit more here, uh, find our business central data stream like so, connect to it. And let's see what we have available as well. So we get into Coffee Mux, uh, uh company and we have all of this stuff here. So where is this coming from? This does not look like tables. And if you're familiar with databases and querying databases, you would want to see tables here or at least would expect to see tables here. But these are not tables. So what are these? Uh, if I go back here into um, Business Central and I look up something called Web Services, uh, I get a list of Web Services right here. And this list should look a little bit familiar to you uh, if you read really, really fast. <laughs> but basically the uh, Web Service list right here, the pages, are the things that are available to you in Power BI. So it's looking at web services. Uh, and for example, here items, which I already picked, which is this item list over here, is if you go into, um, into Business Central, is the items page right here. So we have the item card, we have the item page, etc. So if we wanted to expose like transactions because um, or at least get the transactions, we have something called item ledger entries here, a query. So let's see if 
uh, Power BI sees that. I'm, I'm right here in the eye, uh, so this is clearly uh, ordered by alphabetical order. And I can see that it does not show me the query. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It does show me the query right here. Item ledger entries. Let's just go back and make sure that that is correct. Item ledger entries. It's showing us item ledger entries and item ledger entries. Okay, so that's awesome. And what I want to do is pick that. So what do I get with item ledger entries? I actually get... Uh, okay, so this one has been... Um, is obsolete. So what do we what can we do? Well, this is a real life example. We're going to just create one. Okay, no problem. We'll get in here and create a new. And in this case, what I'm going to do is create a reference to the item ledger entry page. So I just hit new right here. And I get a new line. And I click on page. And I look up, so you might actually have this experience. In this case, this web service has been made obsolete by probably an update, uh, which is interesting. And uh, we probably did get an email about that. So here, what I'm doing is I'm looking into all the pages in the system to create a new web service. And I want to find the item ledger entries. And I know that item ledger entries is a page so here we go 38 hit okay on that and for people who don't know that um, item ledger entries is the page that shows the detail or the transactional detail for an item and i call it ile that's old school but that's okay and i publish that so now when i publish the item ledger entries like that it gives me a string here uh, i should do that in a minute or at least when i get out of the record, right? So, and I have now given access to the item ledger entries for authenticated users out of other applications, such as Power BI. So I, if I close that out, I can now get into Power BI and just, let's just go ahead and cancel this and go back in get data oops it's a thanksgiving special that i'm doing right now so it's going to be a little bit longer than the most of them <laughs> i go into business central and so if everything worked out fine i should see ile connect and it gives me the companies i go into coffee mugs and now if I look through it, see, right here, ILE. And so the great thing about seeing the item ledger entries is that we have, and I'm going to load this, we have some sales and purchasing data. Uh, and what I'm mostly interested in is the sales data. So right here, I have both items and item ledger entries. So let me just go ahead and put this one over here, create a new box and open up the item ledger entries. And what I want to see is the item number, which is so. And then I'd like to see a sales amount, actual. And this is, these are the total sales for these items. And uh, so, so here I'm able to get much more than I got out of the item list. I could only see the inventory because the item list was restricted to only show inventory. Now I can see total sales. Also, what's very interesting about this is that I picked the item number and the sales amount actual, and it brought the total amount for the sales amount in for each item. but behind each transaction here is or are a number of transactions 
behind each one of this line or this row, we have number of transactions that are automatically being summed up. So if I take a look at this table, I can do that by going in here. And this is the, um, the uh, item ledger entry table. And as you can see here, it shows all the purchase receipts that we have. We show the item, etc. And here we see the cost. And here we see, we should see the sales somewhere uh, right here, sales actual. So if I drill down further, we should see some sales amounts. It's probably sorting by cost and then I have sales like so. So automatically the system is uh, summing it up for me. Now, if I go ahead and show this as a pie chart, like we did the other data. So I'm just going to click on it and make sure that's selected. Now this makes much more sense to view as pie chart. This is basically showing me the biggest seller. The biggest seller is uh, 1996S. Uh, we could also show it as a tree map, which I really like. So you can see here the sales by each one. And again, 1996 is the biggest, but a close second is 1896. Now, um, <laughs> since we uh, set this up by the item ledger entries, we would like to see, of course, the name of the product, uh, unless you remember all these codes, uh, which most people probably don't. Uh, it would be nice to see the name. And as you notice in this particular list of the item ledger entries, uh, the description does not exist. So we'll leave that for next video, how to fix that and set that up.